I'm, keep watching. I'm going to go over how, to, how I installed the system and then I'm going to, at the end of the video, there's going to be some TDS readings I'm taking from various spots. So thanks again and keep watching. Okay, so this is the iSpring water system and it's at 123filter.com or Amazon. It's actually a really good company. Um, it says that the housing is made in the USA or says it is made in the USA. Um, I bought from this company because they get great reviews on Amazon and in reading uh, through the product details it seems they've changed a lot of things on these filters based on what the customers say and that guy's never real big with me because um, I just really appreciate a company that listens to their customers and makes changes um, to make their customers happier so we'll see how it works okay the first thing you have to do is find out which one of these two pipes is for hot and cold water one of the, you see there's a shut off on each one so in order to do that to determine which side was the cold water what I did is I ran the cold water and I felt the pipes to see which one was colder now since you tip the faucet to the right it makes more sense um, that it would be the right tube but I just want to make sure so I put it on cold water and I ran it and then I felt this and that is the cold water line and then I put it on hot and I felt this one that is absolutely the hot water line on this side so that lets me know this is the cold water line so I turn this off first okay like a lot of things I've found in this house things are done kind of half-assed got this uh, half inch tube comes up comes under here here's where it fits on it's uh, right underneath where the dishwasher drain comes so this hose is all coiled up so I have to put this uh, this fitting on here and it's kind of a tight spot I'm a little angry about that I'm thinking about I was thinking about cutting this off bringing this down here extending this so I could get to it but I'm here and uh, the hardware stores across town see this hose could have come down about right there instead of being all the way up under here where you can't even get to it like I said I would fix it or change it but I don't feel like running out to the hardware store to get fittings for this okay it looks like the next step here is to put this valve on here it's gonna go right on there and this part of it excuse me the part with the handle this little nipple here that's gonna go to the RO system oh and I did forget a step too okay so I've just put that little valve in there now this side had a black washer in it so I stuffed that in there this side shouldn't need Teflon tape so I put it on there by hand and then I took my wrench and I twisted around until I got it where I wanted it okay so it's on there and I've turned the water back on with that valve there off because I wanted to pressure check it and make sure there was no leaks um, not a problem you know this is off so now I'm going to hook up the rest of the system. Okay, now that I've done step three first, I went back and did step one, which is to put these three big filters on. Each one of these tubes has the filter already in there with plastic on it, and it's marked at the top here, um, sediment, GEC, whatever that is, and CTO. So you just put them on there. Um, so that, that part of it's done. I haven't tightened them really tight, um, because I think it's going to be easier to tighten them once uh, this system is installed in the cabinet. Okay, so next you put in the RO membrane and it has to fit in so that this is all the way in like that so it seats in there. And I will show you how to get these quick disconnects on and off. It's also in the instruction manual. Okay, so these quick disconnects here have these little blue tabs on them and it comes together like this. So what you do to get that hose out of there is you just pull this little tab out of there and then you're going to push this down while you're pulling this hose out. It's that simple. So to put it back in there, you're just going to make sure that's down and then push this all the way in. And then you're going to come back and you're going to lift that, lid up, that lip up just a little. Sorry for the bad camera work. And you're going to push this little tab in there like that. Now the next step in the instructions is to install the RO drinking faucet, but I think I want to go see, fit this and see where I want to put this housing first. It's a, kind of a big guy, so we'll see where I think it's going to go. 
Wow, that is huge. I had to actually kind of put this um, horizontally and squish this past this pipe. Um, geez, that's my nature. I just get things and uh, <laughs> just try it, but it'll work. Um, things are going to be different than I thought. I thought I could put all this on one side. Looks like this is going to be on this side. I'm going to have to raise that up and uh, drill it in there. But uh, that's how it's going to be, I guess. Okay, there's the start of the hole, and to finish it up, I'm going to use this step drill here. So what I did is I started with little bits, and I slowly graduated up to larger bits. I, I didn't want to just take a huge bit and drill into that because it can be uh, kind of precarious with thin metal. So I'm going to finish it with this guy and get it to the size that I want. Okay, so here's the hole. It's going to go down in here. Nice spring uh, provides a nice helpful picture of how these fittings fit together. So I'm going to do it that way. Okay, the next step was to install the tank shutoff valve. So I should have shown you that. But there's, a, there's a metal nipple that comes out of this tank. So I wrapped six, six rings of Teflon tape around there in the directions of the threads, in the direction that you would tighten this. So I put that on there and then I turn this um, plastic valve on here by hand and make sure you tighten it from this instead of turning the tank you don't want to over tighten it and then I stuff this yellow tube in here and then I put one of those little blue quick fits on there so that stuff is complete okay the next step they have is a uh, tubing hookup I'm going to put everything in there before I do that step and then after that we're going to install the drain, saddle drain valve. I'm going to do that next before I fit everything in there. Then I'm going to install the tubing, then I'm going to go back to the tubing install, and then I'm going to start up the system. But meanwhile, I never put this blue line on this faucet, this one right here. So I need to do that now. There's a couple fittings in here. Let me show you. Okay, so nut first. You put the nut first um, so that the flat side is towards away from the faucet. And then you, uh, you stick that ferrule on there. And that's uh, it's a tight fit. And then you push your little plastic piece on the inside to keep that firm. So when this screws on, this nut is going to come up here. And it's going to screw on like that. So I'm going to do that now. And I can't hold the camera and do that at the same time. So you'll just have to believe me. Okay, I kind of got busy here. And forgot to uh, do instructions. But what it basically did is I followed the instructions here on where to connect the tubes. And then I drilled a hole. I have a quarter inch hole in my drain here. The saddle was too small to fit over the PVC. So I just went ahead and drained it, drilled it into the sink. We're going to replace the sink at some point anyway, so it wasn't really a big deal. So I drilled a quarter inch hole in there, and then I took a file. And I filed off the edges because it's got a little piece of um, foam in there as a gasket. So you want to give it the most chance you can. So you want to file that smooth in case there's any burrs in there around that hole. And then you shove this in there, and then put this on. You put the saddle on, and then you put this nut on here. Now it's not too big of a deal because this isn't this part isn't under a lot of pressure, so you don't have to worry too much about leaks. Um, but there you have it. So it is all installed now. Okay, it's all installed. That was pretty easy. It takes up a lot of room. Looks like that valve's not leaking back there. I'm probably still going to replace it tomorrow. Um, I don't want it to leak. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this test um, with one hand. I'm going to use the same drinking vessel or the same vessel for each of the waters that I checked because I found for some reason that I don't understand drinking vessel size matters and I don't have three of these. <coughs> so first let's try the uh, RO water. So we're going to bring this over here and we're going to fill it up. See what we get. Okay, so that's this 26, and it is about 26. Now we think that perhaps, just to let you know, there's a problem with the uh, pressure tank under here. 
So I've contacted the company and they're sending me a new pressure tank because the taste wasn't quite right. So there was two possibilities since it was after the membrane. One was that that post-carbon filter there was bad and leaking. And the other was that there was a problem with the pressure tank. But I turned it off the other day and the water seemed clear. The water's not bad, but it's not as clean as I'd like. And I can tell you that the company that makes this is extremely responsive to their customers. So now we're going to put some tap water in here. Okay, let's measure that, see what it is. Now this meter that I'm using has automatic adjustment with temperature. And that says 383. That's right from the tap. So it's quite a difference. Now I'm going to try water from the uh, fridge filter. Let's see what that does. Now this this water we thought seemed to make, a, or this filter we thought seemed to make a pretty big taste, a, a pretty big difference in the way the water tastes. But it doesn't seem like it makes that big a difference. So this is 367, uh, 370. I have also tried a Brita filter and that takes it down to something like 273. So it actually works better than the fridge filter. So just to show you how this system is working, this iSpring system. And like I said, the company is extremely responsive to their customers and they're really some great people. So they're going to send me a new tank because I don't like the taste of that. And I noticed some cloudiness issues, but there you have it.